Hello friends, Sumit here. A lot of working professionals do approach me and ask me, Sumit sir, we know big data, but we are clueless that what project should we do. In this session or in this video, I will give you one very very generic idea which can be the best use case for doing a big data project. This use case is more on reporting, right? So basically Amazon, for example. Now in Amazon, you end up making some purchases, right? Let's say you are purchasing a television. Is that a transaction? Yes or no? Yes, right? Let's say you are adding some money to your Amazon wallet. This is also a transaction. Let's say you are updating your address. You are entering a new address and things like that. It can be anything. All these are day to day transactions that you do. And then of course, Amazon in the back end holds all of this in our RDBMS system, right? So Amazon get lot of this data, which is more of a transactional data, which is hold in a database like MySQL, or it can be SQL server, anything like that. Now, this is all about transactions, which are day to day, even the sellers can do these transactions by adding a new product, updating the price of the product, things like that. All of this does not require any analysis as such. What if you have to do some analysis on this data? For example, what you want is, let's say in Bangalore, how many LG TV or televisions have been sold? How many Samsung mobiles have been sold in, let's say Hyderabad, things like that. All of that require some crunching of data where a analytical system is the best fit. Can you not do it in a RDBMS or database? You can do it, but a database is not meant for doing such analytics. Why? Because if you start doing a reporting work on that, your day to day operations get hindered, right? The important aspect about your databases is to handle day to day transactions. If I'm making a purchase, I should not feel that system is slow. My order should go thoroughly. But if you start doing this reporting work, all the users which are doing the transactions will be impacted. The system gets slow. Moreover, reporting work will be very, very slow. So you do not want to club these two things in a single system. A single system is not meant to do everything, right? A system has a capability to do transactions. Another system will have a capability to handle your analytics. Now, if you want to do or perform such analysis, you should be going with your big data systems, which are the best fit for that. What you can do is you can transfer all of this transactional data from your traditional RDBMS to your big data environment. What is that environment? It will be mostly a data lake. Now examples of data lake, if you talk about Hadoop, it is HDFS. If you talk about Amazon AWS, it will be Amazon S3. If you talk about your Azure systems, then it will be data lake Gen2. It can be anything, but it will be a distributed storage platform, which will handle your data. And we call it as a data lake because so much of data will be there and it's scalable. How will you bring your data to data lake? What's the mechanism? You can apply some techniques like scoop, right? If we talk about traditional on-premise systems or Hadoop, we can do scoop to bring your data from your relational databases to your data lake. Once the data is in data lake, the storage part is sorted. We have to handle the processing part. We create hive tables on top of this data and then process it through Spark. I will leave this question to you that why are we bringing Hive in between? Why are we creating Hive tables? What's the use when we can directly process it through Spark, right? So this you can mention in the comments. Now data is there in data lake. We created a Hive table. We are processing that Hive table through Spark. We can perform all optimizations, whatever we want. And the process data we might keep in a NoSQL database like HBase. The reason being when you are done with your reporting and all, you want to keep the data in a manner that can be easily queried because when you put data in HBase, we get row keys based on what we can quickly query the data in no time. So this is about the entire thing that data lake is for your storage and you can schedule 
reports every one day through any scheduler like airflow which is very very trending because you do not want to manually go and run this pipeline you want to schedule it in an automated way right you cannot go on the system and say that okay let me start the pipeline you want to say that okay once i have done this pipeline i want this reporting to be done every day and when we talk about concept of doing it daily or weekly we talk about a batch pipeline now when we are talking about aws how do we ingest the data we can use aws glue to ingest the data from relational database to a data lake and then once the data is there right what we can do we can process it through athena or our redshift based on whether it's a ad hoc query or we want to do it every time so there are two ways one is you either say that okay i want to only pay whenever i run the query based on amount of data scan then you can use athena which charges you around $5 per tb of data scan which is very very less right and otherwise if you feel that oh throughout the day we have to do some reporting work and all then you might create your own redshift cluster to say that okay it's a dedicated cluster it's on me that whatever queries i want to run and in that case it will charge you for the resources you have i mean turned on now when we talk about uh, your azure then in that case as i said the storage layer is azure data lake gen2 how do you get the data to this layer you can run your azure data factory so that it pulls the data from outside and gets it to your data lake and then you can probably use synapse analytics or anything in synapse analytics also you have two ways one is that you can say that i want a inbuilt sql platform where if i fire a query i am charged based on the amount of data scan you can go with this mode when you feel that probably you require it like once in a day then why you want to turn on a cluster and all right you say that okay i'm doing very ad hoc analysis so let me pay for the amount of data scan but if you see that oh there is a lot of reporting work and you might be doing many times in a day throughout the day then you can go with a dedicated sql pool and if you feel that oh you have a uh, i mean to want to do it very very fast data size is big then you can even go with a spark thing there this session would have given you a clear cut clarity that what use case you can solve through big data whether you are from banking retail healthcare finance any domain i feel reporting work is there in every domain so i hope with this you have got enough clarity you can try working on such pipeline i hope you like the session i'll be coming up with more such sessions do not forget to subscribe to my channel and do like this video mention your thoughts in the comment section thanks a lot